Hi everyone, I'm Alex Scotch and I'm a director at Beacon Legal. I've been through a number of performance reviews myself, both as a lawyer and also as a recruiter. And I've advised hundreds of candidates on how best to prepare for their review. Approaching your review in the right way gives you the opportunity to reaffirm your contribution and value to the firm, to take on constructive feedback to develop your skills and importantly, to set a clear plan for your development in the future. So we commonly hear that reviews are not given the attention they deserve by neither partners nor by lawyers. So with lack of time, this is the most common excuse. We all know that lawyers are busy people, so in under five minutes today, I'm gonna to give you five tips on how to get the most out of your performance review, and you can use this as a checklist for when you prepare. Tip number one, so when you walk into the room, no surprises. You should already have a good idea of the positives, as well as the points of development required from you, and this is all about clear and consistent communication throughout the year. So if you don't get consistent feedback from your manager or through the partners, you need to be proactive and take it upon yourself to seek this out. So do you have at least one meeting per month as a minimum with your supervisor to assess your performance? The more time you can get one-on-one -on -one with a partner or your direct manager, the quicker you're gonna develop. So if you don't, then you need to find out why not. So most managers will be happy to agree if you ask them that you want to do this, and it also shows your eagerness and your willingness to learn and grow your career with the firm. So this is especially relevant if you feel there is a gap in your learning or there's a problem which needs to be dealt with. It's nearly always better to discuss the situation as promptly as possible. Tip two, preparation is key. So before you start preparing, think of your career goals, whether you want a promotion, new opportunities, a pay rise, or even all three. Keep them in mind when you're preparing as it's good motivation. To set aside time to complete your company's review as thoroughly as possible. To do it really well takes a long time, so make sure you don't leave it until the last minute. Think of it as a tender document and a business plan all in one. It should clearly set out four main subjects, where your achievements for the previous year and use examples, what you want to improve and ensure you're honest and specific in your feedback, your financial results in the form of your annual billings against your targets, and importantly, your plan for the following year. So here's where you can set out what you want to achieve and ensure your career goals are aligned with the firm. Tip number three, analyzing your performance. So your end goal is to have a document which clearly sets out your overall performance and contribution to the firm. So there's six key features here which you should include to create a performance analysis document which is gonna look good. So let's look at these in turn. The six areas are number one, using examples, two, comparing against the job specification, three, your leadership qualities, four, client development, five, knowing your billings, and six, your development areas. So, number one, using examples of matters or cases which you've worked on. So a good technique here is to create a mini CV detailing your matters or your cases and your personal role which helped achieve a positive result. So number two, compare your performance against the job specification. If your firm has a job specification for your role and even the role above you, you can compare your work against this document. So if you meet or exceed most areas, you should be flagging this during your appraisal meeting and discussing what you need to do to get that promotion. Number three, be able to talk about your leadership qualities. So to become a supervising lawyer, you need to be able to train and mentor junior staff. In our experience, this is one of the areas where lawyers find it relatively difficult to articulate their achievement in this area. So can you do this? What's your management style? How do you resolve conflict? How do you deal with issues? How do you deal with sensitive client issues? So make sure that you can discuss all of these areas and use example to demonstrate your skills and achievements. Number four, client development. So if you've received good feedback from your clients or even brought in new business, you should make sure that this is discussed in your review meeting. So we recommend creating a client development file where you can keep all of the positive emails and your feedback from clients as they're received, and then you can use this when you're creating your performance review document. So the ability to create and foster strong relationships is key to developing your legal career, and really this is especially relevant if you'd like to become a partner one day. Number five, know your billings against target, and don't approach this as a job for the partner. Partners will value your initiative if you're able to analyse your financial performance against your targets, and it also gives you a clear indication of your value to the firm from a financial perspective. As you'd expect, being a significant contributor of revenue is a really powerful tool to be able to positively negotiate your, your REM package, so enter into promotion discussions with this information. Number six, your areas for development. So don't be afraid to set out where you think you could have done better and be honest with it. This is an important part of improving performance and creating your plan for the following year as well. So set some clear deliverables, include milestones, so you can check them off as they're achieved. This leads us nicely into our final tip, tip five, set clear targets and expectations. Setting defined and measurable goals are key to your future success. Ensure that when you receive your written performance review, it contains your individual targets, 
both financial and non-financial, and ensure the targets are broken down into manageable periods. Your quarterly goals should focus on the granular detail and specific skills, such as your ability to demonstrate you can draft a sale agreement, and your yearly targets should focus on the big picture, such as your ability to run an entire matter from start to finish with limited supervision. You should leave your performance review with your firm's version of SMART goals. So let's look at those in turn. S, specific, clear and understandable. M, measurable and results orientated. A, attainable yet sufficiently challenging. R, relevant to the target of the firm. And T, time bound with specific milestones. So that concludes our tips for today. If you can implement what we've discussed today, then you'll be in a really good chance of getting a good performance review and enhancing your future career. If you'd like tips to discuss this further, please do get in touch using the contact details below. And thanks for listening.